Okay, folks, uh, quick video just to show you what I have done to repair the attenuator board on this Schlumberger 4039, and the 4040 is exactly the same. So if you find this problem, then uh, maybe this will be of some help to you. So let me just show you what exactly, and tell you first of all what happened, is that uh, it was not attenuating. So I couldn't get different RF levels coming out of the board. At the same time, when I was powered on, I could smell something burning. And it turned out that this resistor was getting really hot and it was scorching the board right down there. The culprit was, in fact, this 10,000 microfarad capacitor. Now, this one is replaced. The original one actually lies, it's an, uh, uh, an axial type, and it was lying flat on the board. And I just couldn't find axial capacitors in a hurry and I wanted to get this machine working so I've got the radial type and I've mounted it to the board so I'll show you how to do that but the original one actually had gone dead short so there was the problem right there what I did was I and what sorry before I get there the Darlington transistor as a result of the capacitor going short and uh, uh, this thing burning out, this Darlington transistor also blew. So this is a replacement. Now the original is a BD678. There it is over there. The one on the left. The one on the right is a BD676. And I bought two. So 676 went in. It's, it's, it's got the same spec. So it's going to be fine. And... 10 microfarad, uh, 10,000 microfarad cup got to replace. The resistor I tested, it's still okay. You can see the board is really scorched, but uh, nothing I'm going to do that. I'm not going to try and do a board repair over there. And now it should be working fine. I've actually done this repair before by, and then I was in a bit of a hurry to test it and see that I had found the fault. So I put in a 3,300 microfarad capacitor and a, a BD, what was it? A, a, BD140, which is not a Darlington, but it is a PNP, and that sorted out the uh, uh, that sorted out the attenuation switching. The attenuation switching is done by these transistors to the solenoids in the attenuator module. So that sorted it out, but it was failing the self test, and I suspect it was because I didn't have enough capacitance in the 3300 to do the job. Because what happens is uh, when it does a self-test, it actually switches in and out solenoids, sometimes uh, one at a time and sometimes together to compare the attenuation of solenoids and something. And I think that this thing didn't have, or at least the 3300 didn't have enough oomph to kick in two solenoids at once. So there were certain self-tests that failed, even though when you use the unit, it works fine. So now I'm going to put the board back in and I will pick up once it's installed. So just a quick shot of the underside of the board where I've had to solder in some heavy duty leads over here. I've checked the clearance. They're not going to short out against the chassis. Uh, it's on raised sets of posts, so we've got no problems there. And uh, uh, that's where the transistor was soldered in. Sorry, sent to that picture. Transistor was soldered in, in over there and then the capacitor over here. Right, so I've installed the board. It needs, it's got screws in 10 places. One, two, uh, sorry, there, three, four, five, uh, under there, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And then all of the coaxial leads that connect to the various components go back on in. I only loosened them off board. So one, two, uh, three, and this one I loosened on board. Four. So those have to go back on. Turn them in hand tight first. Just use your fingers, get them snugged up, and then with an eight millimeter, you can just give them a very, very gentle nip. So now that's all back on. The only thing that remains to go back on is the heat sink. I'm going to put a little bit more paste on there. And then the heat sink can go back on. And then the front panel can go on and we'll test it out.
So just hang on. Right, so the board is in, the heat sink on, back onto the dummy load, the connector is back on, the other connector up top here for the attenuator board is back on, and I had I made sure that I lined up, and I think you can see, oh, that's the IC there, but anyway, in underneath here is where the connector of this board goes through into the motherboard, and that's all perfectly lined up, it's looking good, so I guess it's time to put this front panel on, and uh, do a soft test. Okay, front panel is back on and let's do a self test. So, self check, there we go, it's item number 31. Let's zoom in for you. So, I type in 3 1 on or on 3 1. There we go. can hear the uh, attenuators clicking in and out the solenoids and it was already failing it was failing on 13 9 it's gone way through 13 the 13s and now it's on 6 and it's passed problem is fixed woohoo all right Thanks for watching. I hope that it helps somebody. I'm going to now put the rest of the screws back on and then give the face panel a wipe down. So my schlummy is working perfectly again. Very happy. Hope it also helps somebody who finds a similar problem. I have to say that this unit, really easy to work on. Everything is accessible, as you saw, and including the cards in the back, really well accessible. So I'm enjoying this very much. Thanks for watching.